redzonesports.bet, the British home of American sports. Welcome back to Sports Air's NBA show. I'm Steve. And I'm Nick. And Steve, it's not just us today. We also have, let's sit up actually, we have The Boss is here today. Tori's here. Really? There we go. You guys are starting to learn the authority in here. Um, so everybody, welcome back to the show. Uh, we're going to start with some questions today, guys. I hope you're ready. You're prepared? Yes, ma'am. We Good are. Good stuff. So, starting off, what game did you enjoy most from the first week? Well, for, I think for me, it was the, the Timberwolves against the Thunder game. I mean, coming into the season, the, the Timberwolves were one of those teams that I was really looking forward to seeing. Mm. Jimmy Butler going over from Chicago, going over there with Andrew Wiggins, Carl Anthony Towns, and Jeff Teague as well. You know, it's almost like little balls, is it? Timber mm. balls or whatever you want to call them. Reunited Tyson Gibson with as well. Yep, yeah, yep. I think it's, they were a really interesting team to get together over the summer. And they're another team we talk about like moving into into a playoff position. Again, a team that maybe a lot of teams might not want to play Agreed. come playoff time. So for them to get involved in this game against the Thunder again, another team that we talk quite heavy about because they're going to be one of the key teams in the West. And they put on an absolute show for us. And we thought the Thunder had got this game in hand, but then Andrew Wiggins decided that mm -hmm. that was not the case. Mm -hmm. He was going to be the big shot guy and he made the game winning shot. And I thought it was a back and forth fight once at one punch after another mm. and Wiggins landed the final punch. Agreed. It's a, that's a statement game. Yeah. I kind of, I mean, uh, you know, we're sitting here in London talking about it. It, it, it opens people's eyes. And I, I completely agree with you. I, I wouldn't want to face them. I think they're, they're on the road. They're definitely on the road. And I had to pick a different game, but I, I love that game. For me, I went with, being a Knicks fan, the, the Thunder Knicks opening night. Was opening night? Well, for them, it was opening night, and which was the Wednesday. So... Basically, the reason I went with this game is almost for closure. I love the fact that they met each other, so I got to see hello to Carmelo and goodbye to Carmelo. I love the guy, but you know, as a Knicks fan, we need to move on. I'm so happy for him that he's in Oklahoma City Thunder, where he has a chance to do something there. But for us, uh, you know, we got to see <laughs> what is left of the Knicks on the team and on the floor, rather. And yeah, so that was for me. Say goodbye to an old friend, put him put him to bed, and move on. But isn't it hard to say goodbye to like an old friend? I mean, obviously, you being a Knicks fan, it's going to be it's going to be very very difficult for you to all of a sudden go, oh, okay, no, Melo's actually not a part of the Knicks anymore. Yeah, we didn't actually win when Melo was in town. So, yeah. is he a hero for the town, or is he not? I think he is because just for his elite scoring and just for the buzz he brought. And and it's, since then, I've seen them, you know, struggling. Halftime, we were, you know, 35 points. Th this is what Mello gave us, was that someone who could put the ball in the basket, which is you need. You need on the floor. Uh, granted, he didn't do all the other things. And where he is now, he doesn't have to do all those other things. So I'm happy he's there. The, the what I'm is going to disappoint me, though, is I predict a good s season for the Thunder, and I think everyone will start saying, you know, looking at Mello in a different light and thinking, oh, he is actually a very good player, you know, Hoodie Mello or how he was in the Olympics, when I don't want to look back and think we wasted his years in New York. So, so that's why for me it was a good, good first game. It just said goodbye, started the season off the wrong way with a loss, but the right way by saying goodbye and moving on. I'm going to land the final punch and say that if you're playing for the New York Knicks for the last 20 years, you've pretty much wasted your life there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> right, guys. Coming in there, breaking Ooh. that one up. Ooh. So I think that's, that's right. enough of looking back at the moment. Uh, looking forward, what league pass games should we be keeping our eyes open for in the next week or so? Mm. I think you need to start off on Saturday night. Rockets against the Grizzlies. I mean, the Rockets and the Grizzlies already played one game this season already. What a game that was. We talked about how good the Grizzlies are and how they upset the Rockets. I know not, you're not particularly that hot on the Rockets, so I think you might change your mind after this because I think the Rockets have got a point to prove with this one because they certainly wouldn't want a second loss to this team. Come playoff time, True. that again could be something that teams will look back on, think, you know, what do we do successful and everything else against this team. But I think the Grizzlies may just have the Rockets number here. Mm. And I expect the Grizzlies to actually win this game. And I would certainly recommend anyone that does have League Pass to go and watch this game because I think it's going to be the best game of the weekend. Mm. I'm, I agree with you. And I, I think the Grizzlies will win as well. And I'm, I mean, Chris Paul's out, obviously. So it's a, a different look to it now. But it, it's a team that starts off the season. If you, if you lose twice to the Grizzlies this early as well, that's not a good. So it's a statement game early, and uh, that's going to be my thing motto of the day. But it is a statement game early on, and I'll be watching. I will definitely be watching. But for me, on Tuesday night, what are you doing Tuesday night? That's that's the game for me. You have the Thunder and the Milwaukee Bucks. 
this is, you know, everything I just said about Carmelo and the Thunder. I think they're going to have a great season just seeing these three All-Stars together. The Milwaukee Bucks, you know, with, with Jonas, we're going to call him, the Greek freak. Uh, that, that team is a team on the rise, and just watching those players, how they're going to match up, is, is for me, it, it, it's it, almost three, three superstars against the future. Uh, I'll call them the future of the NBA. And I just, you know, obviously see what the, the, the older guards can do to him. It's interesting, isn't it? When you look at like league pass games, or anything else like that, you sometimes think to yourself, you know, you look at you know d uh, divisional games, you look mm. at conference games. It's interesting for you to pick like a Thunder against a Bucks because you know obviously the Bucks in the East, Thunder in the West. But this looks like a really exciting game on yeah. paper. I mean, Giannis is you know the guy that we've talked quite heavy about potential early season MVP candidate if that's where we want to go down that mm -hmm. route. But the Bucks have so much more than that, and I think the Bucks are built in some respects for the NBA to have a lot of these guys with like long arms, you know, play right. really good defense. And I think the Thunder might have their hands full here, but I think it's all gonna come down to Russell Westbrook in this mm -hmm. one. I think he's gonna be the guy, if he has a big game, then I think they just might nick this, but don't be surprised if the Bucks actually come away with a win here. Nick it, I like. But, and big game, what is a big game for Westbrook for in your mind? Because it's not as big game as he would have had to have last year, obviously. He doesn't have to have, to have the 25 points, 13, rebounds, you know, 16 assists anymore. I think he needs to put up 40. I think that's what he's going to have to I think is what he's going to have to come out here and do. I think, you know, again, people are talking about, about Westbrook, you know, all the triple doubles, everything else like that. I think triple doubles are an overrated stat. It's, I mean, it's thrown around way too much. Yeah, I'm big. never, never a big mm -hmm. fan of that stat. But to be perfectly honest, I think Westbrook's going to he's going to have a big game. He'll put up 40. I think Giannis will put up another big game as well. I and it could be them two going back and I forth at that. the end of the game. And I think, who's going to throw that final punch? We talked mm. about Andrew Wiggins doing it in the game of the week that I really enjoyed. Is it Westbrook? Is it Giannis? Or who else does step up? Well, I'm going to come in ding-dinging on the second round there. There's Thank a lot of punches being thrown <laughs> around right now. Um, okay, so obviously we've just got into the start of the season. Is there a particular rookie that stood out to you so far? Is there anyone we should be keeping our eye out for? Oh, I love rookies. I love rookies. But this year, I mean, this is, has to be one of the best classes. In, in, I mean, every year they say that. But Lonzo Ball, for me, just everything that surrounds him. I mean, I'm not a Lakers fan, I'm, I'm, but I just love the story. I love this, a hometown kid, UCLA, goes to the Lakers. His dad predicted it all these years ago. I'm, I'm not a big, uh, I don't know if we're going to get in touch on his dad. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't. But I'm not a huge fan of his. But the, this kid can play. And I, I, I watched him play at college. And... He's, he's uh, as you said, the, you don't like the triple doubles, but this is the guy that kind of, he, he can do anything any night. Any night he can get 20 points, 20 assists, maybe not 20 rebounds, but for me, that's him. And Dennis Smith, if I can throw that in there, Dennis Smith Jr. Just jumping in on Lonzo Ball, because I know that this is probably something that is going to be on everybody's mouths right now. Do you think his dad is helping his career right now or hindering it? Personally, I, helping him off the court, hurting him on the court. That's what I think. I think he, he's put that target on, which we kind of discussed off camera before. Mm -hmm. But he put that target on his back, but off the court, the guy has his own shoe already. The guy is, you know, sh obviously his enemy plays millionaire already, but the guy was built and, and <laughs> he, was, he was, well, what's the word, grown to do what he's doing now. So I, I wish his dad would shut up, but I think he's good for him. I don't think you want to get his dad to shut up for any reason. <laughs> I just don't see it happening. And I know one thing, I don't have $500 to spend on a pair of shoes. I know that much as well. Mm. I think the, the problem I have with, with Lonzo Ball is the fact that I do think his dad is actually putting a target on his back and on his front, uh, even more so in some respects. I mean, John Wall pretty much want to light him up. And I think you're going to get that mm. adapted position in the NBA. There's a lot of guys out there that all of a sudden are going to want to, you know, take their chances against Lonzo Ball. I mean, we saw Wall just blow past him time and time and time again in the recent game that them two played. I think it's not a great scenario for Lonzo Ball to go in. I mean, LA's a massive market as well. Even if he's maybe playing somewhere else, it wouldn't be like that. But Lavar obviously wanted Lonzo to play in Los Angeles and stay in he California. But I, I really don't like it at all. And to be perfectly honest, in terms of Lonzo, I don't think he'll be rookie of the year at the end of the year because I think unless people buy into this whole you know, who he is, who his dad is, everything else, mm -hmm. and then that's the only reason to do it. For me, I think the guys that are really st stuck out, I mean, Ben Simmons, we're watching him a year too late in Philadelphia, right. all part of their right. particular process. I think he's been phenomenal, phenomenal to start off the gate. I mean, we was maybe looking at Markel Foots there as well, but he's obviously had his issues, there's something around his shoulder, so he's got off to a very slow start. And the other guy that's really impressed me is John Collins in Atlanta. Yes, you're big I on him. 
I am like? very big on yeah. John Collins. I think Atlanta are a team that had the opportunity to give playing time to a rookie, and they've been able to do it. He's at the moment logging up about 20 minutes. He's got the highest PER of any rookie out there so far. He is a rebounding machine, and I think that kind of attitude, if you've got being a rookie, I think, you know, the fans kind of buy into it. You know, this guy is working hard and really mm. wants to play here. So it might be a bit of a bright spot for Atlanta coming in, going into this season. Oh, I agree. And that's what you want to see as a, as a fan. You want to see your rookies working hard. And, yeah, I completely agree with you. I, there's a disappointment rookies. I, mean, I don't want to keep going back to New York, but the guy we took, Frank, the French kid, he's injured, hasn't really done anything yet. So that's kind of uh, our season done. I think we actually just got an agreement out of the guys there. No. Um, so thank you everybody for tuning in. As always, make sure that you like this video, subscribe, and check out our social media handles below. And we will catch you next time. Redzonesports.bet, the British home of American sports.